Hello, I'm Anthony William, and you're listening to the Medical Medium Radio Show, where each week I talk about the most advanced healing information and secrets about health, much of which is not found anywhere else and is decades ahead of what's out there now. As I've always said, who has 10 or 20 or 30 years to wait for answers to their illnesses? Life is precious and there's no time to spare. Someone told me recently, you always say that. Who has 10, 20, 30 years? How many times can we hear that? I said, how many times can we hear that? How about the person who's waited 20 years for just a simplistic answer that, I mean, that literally could could change somebody's life? And the answer isn't out there for 20, 30 years. It's no joke. I mean, sure, if you're feeling great and you got nothing wrong with you and life is just, you know, darn perfect (laughs) on all kinds of levels, good for you. Good for you. You know, absolutely. But hey, you know, if you haven't felt good and you've been to a a zillion doctors, a zillion doctors, I mean, it could feel that way for so many people. And you you know, you've been everywhere looking for help. No one really cares anymore. And some, I have people tell me, look, Anthony, nobody even cares anymore. I've been telling my same friend for years, I got this, this going on and she doesn't want to hear it anymore. And, you know, I've been telling this family member that I got this going on and they don't want to hear this anymore. And, you know, it's been a struggle. It's been really, really hard for people. And, you know, you're going to the different doctors, you different practitioners, you have all these different symptoms. You got unexplained chronic fatigue, everything else around it, skin problems, you know, restless legs, can't sleep good, insomnia, brain fog, can't think, confusion, can't function, can't do what you need to do, catching colds and flus all the time. I could go on and on and on. And so, yeah. You know, who wants to wait 10, 15, 20 years? I'll say it over and over again. Who wants to wait for something simplistic, a simple answer that could change your life? And that's what the source that came to me at age four allowed me to have for everybody is answers. Finally, some answers. You know, I talk about Epstein-Barr a lot. You guys know that. And I talk about other things too, obviously, because you guys know that too. But, you know, I mean, the Epstein-Barr thing, I'm hearing out there like, oh, yeah, Epstein-Barr, you could look online, Epstein-Barr, yeah. And just so everybody knows, yeah, you can look online and everything, but no one matched up the symptoms to Epstein-Barr until I brought it to the table. It's that critical to know so you can get help. It's, It's one of these things where... We've known about Epstein Barr, and and there's there's information out there, and there's some data, and you could get you know, there's some citations to different um, studies and stuff, but there's nothing there. It wasn't until we matched up, meaning here, right here, okay, we matched up the symptoms to the problem to Epstein Barr, the different stages. If you've guys read you know my first book, you know there's stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four goes into the thyroid. That you know we brought that to the table, Spirit and I. Um, same thing with all the different tingles and numbness, all the different problems, all the different brain fog, all the different issues, all of it. You know the weight gain, all of that. It all comes down to Epstein Barr and. And um, and we had to bring those symptoms to people so they could say, oh my God, an oh my God moment. Like, wait a minute, this is Epstein-Barr. I had mono. This is a later stage Epstein-Barr. I am having neurological problems. It is Epstein-Barr. So people can heal. And who has 20 years to wait for that information? So you're not going to find it online somewhere or in some new fancy printed book unless it came from me and it's not cited to my book. Because, you know, so it's no joke When it comes down to people who haven't had help, haven't had answers, need the answers to heal no matter what it is that we're talking about on the show, no matter what topics, no matter what issues we're talking about on the show, it matters. It so matters. It's not even funny. It's no joke. It matters that much. And so what I've had to do my whole life, and if this is the first time you've logged on to the show ever and you're like, who is this? If you want to know what I've had to do, I've had to be the voice for people. I've had to be your voice, your voice to getting to getting people to, you know, to getting heard, to getting these problems heard so that the information can get out there. 
And, you know, I've had to be the voice for people to say, hey, look, we don't, we can't do this anymore. We can't take this anymore. We need help. And I've had to be the voice to say, hey, look, this is real. This is what's going on. It's not in your head. You don't have crazy women syndrome, which is what they they documented years ago. And they said women were all crazy that had a symptom. You don't have that. You know, it isn't just hormones because hormones are blamed on everything now. Is It isn't just genes because genes are now the new thing. Blame everything on genes. See, what happens is the medical industries, they just don't have answers. So then they sell even alternative medicine. They sell them concepts. Okay, now it's your genes, everybody. Of course we have genes. Of course genes are actually real. Of course genes are in our bodies. Of course we have hereditary traits. Of course we have DNA. But that's not why we're sick. That's not why we're sick. That's the newest crap being fed into everybody so we have to wait another 30 years for real answers and then we're told you know we're it's blamed on us once again you have faulty genes you just got crappy junky dirty genes and that's why you're sick okay and oh yeah let's improve on your genes let's write a whole bunch of books on how your genes could get better it's ridiculous there's real reasons why everybody's sick so yeah when it comes down to it, who has 10 or 20 or 30 years to wait for answers? That's right. I'm going to say it over and over again. And I got to be the voice because that's what spirit intended. That's what happened when I came into this world. That's what happened at age four when I diagnosed my grandmother of, of lung cancer. Uh, and and it, it, it has never stopped. So we, we need these answers. Today's show... So let's go on to today's show. Hey, sorry about that, you guys. I'm going on a rant, you know, today. Going on a rant today, this afternoon. So, so hey, look, today's show is about the hidden antagonizer, heavy metals again, toxic heavy metals, heavy metal detox. Today's show is about the heavy metal detox. You know, you folks might be doing some of those heavy metal detoxes, the heavy metal detox smoothie that I've actually put out there. It's important because there are these hidden antagonizers. They wreak havoc on our life. They they really knock things down. They feed viruses, these toxic, toxic heavy metals. You got mercury, aluminum, copper. Can you guys name a few? Cadmium, lead, arsenic, nickel, and there's probably more I'm not even thinking about. Chromium. Okay, chrome, not chromium, but like chrome. Okay, yeah, chrome, alloy, you name it, steels, steels. You name it, they get into our system, they find their way in, and we're going to talk about how they find their way in. We're going to talk about, you know, how long they've been in there. And that's what's really interesting, how long these metals have been there. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't know, as long as I've lived so far? No, no, even longer than you've lived so far in your life. Isn't it interesting? So we're <laughs> we're going to head in there. Listen, how was the life-changing foods book? Did I let you down? I just want to know. I hope I didn't let you down. I, I killed myself on that book. <laughs> I think so if, if you're unhappy with what's in there, I, I just my apologies, but I'm hoping you're happy with what's in there. And if you haven't gotten the book yet, get it. There's over 50 foods, all this information about what the food does for you. But the book has more than that. Check it out. It's really, I mean, I I think it's a really good book because Spirit gave me the information um, and I, I got it all in there. And, uh, and I, I was even blown away. I was blown away by Spirit's information. I was blown away. And that's what happens when Spirit gives me an information. I, I, that's, that's one of the perks about the job of hearing Spirit since age four is, you know, you get to hear this stuff coming in, this new profound information coming in from Spirit. And then, you know, I get to hear it and be like, whoa, and that, that blows me away. So it's exciting. So um, I, I, I love the book. I hope you guys love it. I really do. Um, so, okay, let's go into this show. Let's do this show. Uh, I'm excited about this. I really am. Heavy metals. Um, am I obsessed about toxic heavy metals? Maybe so sometimes. Okay, maybe so, but there's a real valid reason, and I've given you some of the history before. I've talked a little bit about uh, about that history in book one, so you you're probably aware of some of that history already. I've talked about it before, and I'm going to talk about it again, but give you a little bit more um, to it though, because this is exciting about the heavy metal detox and heavy metals and everything else. 
first of all, you know, when it comes down to toxic heavy metals, do they give us symptoms? Yeah, they can. They can give us ADHD, ADD. They can give our children ADHD, ADD really easily. Focus concentration problems. They can increase our viral issues like viruses like Epstein-Barr feed off of toxic heavy metals. And then when that happens, we get more tired and more tired and more tired. We can get brain fog, irritability, frustration. We can get SIBO from toxic heavy metals. And what's SIBO? Do you guys know by now probably. You folks know by now. SIBO is uh, streptococcus, even though practitioners don't know that yet. They just don't. Doctors don't know that. They just think it's an overgrowth of bacteria. They don't really know what kind. It's antibiotic resistant strep, streptococcus. And that's, you know, that's exactly what SIBO is. So um, toxic heavy metals tend to uh, like grow and overgrow and bring that back in. Um, UTIs, okay, that's you can when you have elevated toxic heavy metals, urinary tract infections, sinus infections, sinus problems. You can easily catch more colds and flus. Acne, yes, acne too on top of it because acne is strep and an underlying chronic systemic strep infection that's just percolating in the body for years and years and years, even from childhood. Fatigue, you can get headaches, migraines, anxiety, different bouts of anxiousness, different bouts of anxiety, different forms of depression, all from toxic heavy metals. And you can get OCD. OCD can develop and get worse over time. Do you know anybody who deals with OCD? Do you know anybody who's dealt, dealt with it? Have you dealt with it? And it goes on and on and on. So let's go into some history a little bit. Let's go into some history. First of all, I said earlier, I said before, I said we have these toxic heavy metals and they're inside of us. And they're inside of us before we're even born. What does that mean? And, and, and how does it work? First of all, the heavy metals that are inside of us are older than us. They're older than us. So the original ones that we come into the world with uh, we were born with these original toxic heavy metals, such as mercury and even some lead and, you know, even some aluminum, but especially mercury could be as old as a thousand years, thousand years. Now, it doesn't mean what I mean by a thousand years. The earth created that mercury, um, you know, before it was mined long before a thousand years okay but a thousand years ago and a little bit past a thousand years i'd probably go back even two three thousand years ago it was starting to be mined okay it was it was worked meaning there was there were people digging it out of the earth digging it out of the earth and um and not cultivating it but gathering it for use and there was never a good use for mercury ever was definitely one of the blunders of humankind, of mankind, without a doubt. But the mercury that's inside of us can go back generation, 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 and keep on going. 50 generations, okay? 60 generations, 80 generations, 80 great, 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 great grandma and grandpas, okay? And keep on going. You know, you can use your imagination on that one and see how far it takes you. You can even play with the math. It can go back a good couple thousand years. And so, you know, that's that's basically how it works with us. So this toxic heavy metal goes for the ride. Doesn't leave the body of anybody. It stays in the bodies, stays in the cells. It gets passed on generation, and we get more intolerant to it. In fact, this time around, in the last 30 years, we're more intolerant to it than ever before in history, and our children are paying the price. And, and I'm talking about new mercury that's entering into our bodies now, too, through all kinds of different facilities. I mean, all kinds of different ways. Uh, it's falling out of the sky. It's dropping out of the sky, out of the air, out of planes. It's, it's floating in the sky. It's in the waters. Okay? It's all over the place. It's in um, our food. Okay? It's in medical stuff. 
So it's in medical, you know, medications. It's in, you know, uh, things like that. It's in places. It's all over the place. I mean, just look at antibiotics. Antibiotics harbors petroleum. So petrol fuel, oil, engine oil is in antibiotics. <laughs> engine oil and lots of pesticides too because they're, you know, genetically altered corn, grain grown on the planet for pharmaceutical use, sprayed with Im immense amounts of heavy metal laced copper, um, uh, aluminum, mercury, pesticides, okay, um, mixed with petroleum-based engine oils. Yeah, crazy, right? Put into an antibiotic capsule. Antibiotics can be uh, created without all that, by the way. Antibiotics, you can, you can make an antibiotic and minus all that garbage, every bit of it, just so you know. So it's there, and, and here's the thing. That's just literally an antibiotic. But when it comes down to having mercury in our systems from long ago, you might say, well, what if, what if nobody used mercury in my family, in my family line? You know, like, how can I have mercury in me from the old day? You know, we can have mercury in us from the new day. Did you ever have a can of tuna fish? Did you ever have tuna? Did you ever have um, <laughs> something else? I'm trying to think now what other options and which other ways. I know people who played with broken thermometers. I know people who uh, whose family owned dentistry and they played with, you know, mercury balls running in their hands and running on the floors when they're children and little girls and little boys playing with mercury. And there's just ways of getting it. It's in other places too. It's in pesticides sprayed inside homes. So, I mean, you could be growing up in a home that was heavily sprayed before you, your family bought the home or owned the home or the apartment, heavily sprayed apartments, apartment complexes. There's still mercury in, in everything. The, you know, uh, pesticides aren't mercury-free. It's not like there's a big sign on them, mercury-free. There's anything goes in a pesticide, herbicide, fungicide, rodenticide, uh, pfft. Uh, you know, herbicide. I think I said that one already. I can't tell now. So you guys, where does the old mercury come from? Let me give you an example. Back in the 1800s, at 17 and 1800s, if you went to the medical doctor, so if you had an ache, a pain, a stomach ache, you broke your leg, twisted your ankle, hurt your back, um, you know, had a bad toothache, uh, had a migraine, um, let's see, felt dizzy, whatever it was, and you went to the medical doctor, you know, uni medical university doctors, okay, the conventional ones. If you went there, first thing they would give you is, well, they would look at you for a moment, and then they would mix a nice big glass of water mixed with part mercury, and you would drink this mercury elixir, this mercury tonic. It's all through the 1700s and 1800s. Now, well, you could argue and say, well, you know what? My forefather probably didn't go to a doctor that gave a mercury tonic. No, not true. Every single doctor, every medical doctor, every conventional doctor, it, uh, mandatory upon entering that doctor's office getting an exam, you ingested a mercury tonic. Didn't matter what, 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 when, where, who you are, what you are, child, adult, baby, it didn't matter. You drank a mercury tonic. Now, the problem with this is that it was not only dangerous, but it caused a lot of trouble. And the trouble it caused was before you'd go to the doctor, you would get ready for the fallout. If you were married and had children, um, chances are your wife and kids would lock down the house, lock the doors before you came back home and made you stay away for a week before you entered the home again. So it meant Loss of work, loss of family communication, you name it. Because when you went to the doctor's office and you had a mercury elixir, you, you became insane. This is well known. You became insane. It was called quack, quackery, being quacked. Now, I'm going to tell you right now about the whole quackery thing, the whole quack thing. Right now, in our modern day in the moment, if you hear the word quack, you think... It's an alternative doctor, an alternative healer, um, an herbalist, 
chiropractor that has different thinking, homeopathy, homeopath that has different thinking, because quack has been associated with anybody in alternative medicine. That's what quack has been associated with. So the whole quack thing's been dumped on good doctors, practitioners, and healers. But let me tell you where quack came from. Quack came from medical doctors. The term quack came from if you went to the medical doctor, they would quack you. They would quack you. That's right. Because they were the quacks. They were the quacks because when you went into that that, uh, medical office and you drank that mercury tonic for whatever ailed you, you went insane. You became quacked. That was the quackery. You went home quacked. And what happened is that you'd go home. Chances are you could kill your family. You could do something horrible. You can, there's, there's stories of just drooling for weeks and talking rhymes and rid- riddles and children's rhymes. You, end up in, you can end up in an alley for a week, three days, four days. Depends on how severe the quackery occurred. This happened for hundreds of thousands of people through the 1700s and 1800s, both abroad and here in the U.S., okay? The reason why you don't hear a lot about it is because it was an absolute epic disaster of, I mean, epic proportion, massive disaster. Abe Lincoln was ill from quackery himself, meaning he had severe depression from mercury mercury elixirs. Everyone experienced quackery at one time. It was horrendous. So what happened was everybody got wise. They got wise and they stopped going to doctors. Didn't matter if they broke a darn leg, they wouldn't go to doctors. And the medical industry fell apart, lost all its money, and hit rock bottom. Hit rock bottom. You won't hear that anywhere. Oh, of course not, because we don't want to visit that, God forbid. We don't want the truth to come out. The fact that in the 18, by the late 1800s, nobody went to the doctor and med- medical universities weren't funded anymore and everything was on such low battery. It was literally at a crash point of non-existent. Doctors had empty offices across the country, no matter what the case was. Because everybody got wise to it. They didn't want to lose their lives anymore. They didn't want to lose their wives and their kids and their families and their jobs. And that was quackery. Quicksilver is what it was. It was so detrimental, so devastating to the people. And that's where the term came from. Guess how? Guess what? It was flipped. It was flipped. All of a sudden, you're an alternative practitioner. Oh, you're a quack. Flipped. What a great way of flipping that. What happened was by the late 1800s, because nobody went to the doctor anymore and the medical universities were out of business and there was no funding anymore and everything crashed, the alternative movement exploded. It came out of nowhere. Homeopaths, the first one. Chiropractors, the very first ones. Thank God. Naturopaths, naturopathy, very first ones, meaning they were always there in the in the back doing their thing but they were ostracized they were beaten down for a long time herbalists came out healers came out and the birth of alternative medicine was born and in order to actually get the conventional world back the conventional medicine world back in order they put out advertisements saying you go to the chiropractor you're you're going to a quack because decades a couple of decades later people forget You know, decades, two decades later, you kind of forget about some of the mistakes. And the main medical world advertised, we no longer carry Quicksilver. We no longer deal with the elixir. So people trusted them again, went back to them again. And then the word quack was pushed on the alternative doctors. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is when your great-grandparents and and your family in the olden days, in the 1700s, 1800s, they drank those toxic elixirs and they suffered consequences for a little while. And that mercury is still in there. <clears throat> it was in them, passed on to the next generation, passed on next generation, next generation could have got passed on to you. And it could be in your cells because it is in your cells. It's in all of our cells. You can't, can't escape it. So why don't we get some of that old mercury out of us because we're getting intolerant to it. And we can get that stuff out of us. And we can also get the new stuff. And here's, here's something about how mercury works, just so you know. Mercury gathers on its uh, on itself it ga- it gathers it it um, comes together you can have old mercury in you or mercury that you got in you 10 years ago and if you get new mercury in you it comes together it comes together it finds itself 
it it's like two raindrops next to each other on some glass and then you just kind of rub them together and they come to one you know two drops of water can come together become one drop that's how mercury works so just so you know Mercury keeps on building on itself and it could get more toxic over time. If you have a little bit of mild OCD and it seems like it's getting worse, part of that could be it could be collecting some more mercury. So we have to get it out. If you have anxiety and it tends to get a little bit worse or it's getting worse over the years, could be collecting a little bit of more mercury there. Same with depression. Now, here's how it goes. Everybody has toxic heavy metals in a different area of their brain, in a different area. It's not all the same. You can have it in the left te temporal lobe, lobe. You can have it in the frontal lobe. You can have, have it in the bottom of the frontal lobe. You can have it near the pituitary gland. You can have it in so many different places, in so many different ways, okay? You can have it anywhere, anywhere in the brain. And you can have different levels of heavy metals. A little bit of mercury, a little bit of lead, a little bit of aluminum, a little bit of copper. Someone might have more lead, some arsenic, some nickel, and some mercury. Someone might have all mercury, a little bit of aluminum. Everybody's different. The apple pie is different. The recipe is different for every single person. So what does that mean? Someone's depressed, but in a different way. Someone's got anxiety in a different way. Hey, you know, how's, how is your depression working? Well, mine is kind of where I feel lonely all the time. Well, that's not my depression. My depression is I feel an emptiness. Well, that's not my depression. My depression feels I feel like a, like a dark clouds over my head raining. Hey, that's not my depression. My depression is I, feel, I can't, I, it, it's, a, it's a depth of sorrow that can't be explained. That's not mine. And it goes on and on and on and on. And then we just classify it as just depression. Same thing with anxiety. I'll say, well, what's your anxiety like? Someone might be like, well, I just can't sit still. I'm like, really? That's not bad at all. Because that's different than someone else I've heard where they feel like jumping out of their skin and they want to jump into a lake. You know, everybody's different. Some people say, hey, my anxiety is so bad, I haven't eaten in a week. I can't put food in my stomach. It's flipping too many times. But everybody's anxiety is different to a, a, a serious degree. And why is that? Because the toxic heavy metals can be in different parts of the brain on everybody. But not only that, they could be alloy. Alloy is a mix. They're running off each other. They're, they're helping each other. They're ricocheting off of each other. They're reflecting. Frequency of the different heavy metals are reflecting off of each other. Aluminum reflecting off of mercury. Mercury re reflecting off of copper. You know, an alloy is like a mix of metals to make something stronger. So, and lighter, your bicycle. You know, they don't make bicycles like they used to. Bicycles like they used to were just like iron. <laughs> they, were, they were like, go to a tag sale or an old antique shop and pick up an old bicycle. You break your back putting that damn thing in the uh, back of your truck or car. I mean, it weighs, <laughs> it weighs 400 pounds. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't weigh 400 pounds, but it could feel like that. And now bicycles today, they're light as air. You can pick it up. You can put it on the back of your car. It's alloy. It's, it's a mix of metals to make it lighter and stronger. Well, we have alloys in us at this point. There's so many mix of heavy metals, plus alloy itself is a group of metals. We can get contamination from all on its own. So there's a reason why we have all these different symptoms and these different levels of symptoms different levels of brain fog and then when you put viral components to it you guys you put viral components to it like a virus eating some toxic heavy metal a virus eating mercury a virus eating aluminum a virus eating some arsenic then you have something entirely different you get a lot of different symptoms got a lot of different Epstein-Barr symptoms because Epstein-Barr likes a lot of heavy metals and then it eats them Bugs eat heavy metals, um, chews them up, um, goes to the bathroom, releases them, and they become more methylated dangerous. And they interfere with our own methylation, which we're doing a methylation show uh, coming up, I promise. We're going to do the uh, MTHFR gene mutation, which is com com total complete confusion and has to be corrected at least here 
at this show to start with so that there's some hope, that there's actually some hope so we're constantly not going down the wrong direction all the time with misinformation out there. So, so what happens is, you know, when the virus feeds off heavy metals, it releases neurotoxic versions of those heavy metals causing more anxiety, more depression, more memory loss, more brain fog, and it can do that even without viral intervention. You can still have OCD, you still can have anxiety, you can still can have memory loss with just heavy metals themselves because they can run off, they can oxidize. Oxidation, these metals oxidize and leach. They leach into other tissue of the brain, liver, organs, the pancreas, spleen, they get everywhere. So we want to clean these mercury, aluminum, lead components out of our body because it's really that important because it could really get in the way. And I'm not just talking about anxiety and depression. I'm talking about, you know, irritability, frustration. I'm talking about, like I said, bacterial overgrowth, the brain fog, of course, dizziness, anything. Um, you can get migraines, headaches, chronic migraines and headaches. You can have the shingles virus involved eating a lot of heavy metals. We can have both things happening at once and this intolerance that we have to toxic heavy metals is which is is a big part of what's happening and i talk about it in life-changing foods you have the um unforgiving four toxic heavy metals are one of the unforgiving four right we did that show on it you got <laughs> you got the radiation you got the viral explosion that occurred in the last hundred years and 100 plus years and you have all this going on but the toxic heavy metals are kind of like a foundation, kind of like where, you know, where do you want to go with your health to jump start it? How do you want to change your life? How do you want to make something better? Let's get the heavy metals out and you'll start seeing things getting better. I want to tell you another story of where we can get, you know, toxic heavy metals from the past. You could say, hey, look, I did research on my genetic line, my family line. We didn't drink any toxic elixirs. What, what are you talking about, Anthony? Well, did anybody in your family line ever wear a felt hat at all, ever? A felt hat going back from 1950 on down to 1800 to 1780? Do your research. See if anybody wore a felt hat. Somebody, because it was practically mandatory to wear a felt hat as a man. And what was soaked into that felt hat? Mercury. Lots of it too. Off the charts. We're talking off the charts. Dangerous levels and amounts of mercury were soaked into felt hats. Hat makers had a three to five year life, um, or what I should say, you know, um, we have three to five year uh, sentence, life sentence is what I'm trying to say. That means that they had three to five years before they died or became so ill from the mercury, dipping the hats in the mercury solutions. When you became a hat maker, it was called, and I'm not just talking about, say, one aspect of hat making. I'm talking about the area of hat making where you actually have to treat the hats. If you entered into that area of hat making, you didn't live long. It was called mad hatters. So that's what it was called, mad hatters disease. So, you, you know, it was mad hatters. Mad is a hatter because you went utterly insane when you worked with felt hats for a little while. But wearing felt hats, lots of mercury absorbed into the brow of every man in every country, Europe to the U.S. So that's also in our past. And does this matter? Yeah, it matters. Because here's the deal. What you see doesn't hurt you, I guess. That's the, that's the society we're in today. And planet Earth, right here today, it's like, you don't see it, then it can't be hurting you. I don't see it, so it can't be hurting you. Oh, you got symptoms, Mrs. Jones? Um, I think you're crazy or lazy or bored because I can't find anything wrong with you at the doctor's office. So maybe you're making it up. Maybe it's all in your head. Back in, I mean, this has happened in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. How many people went to the doctor? So, oh, your exam looks fine. So your depression, your hot flashes, all the different things that you're going through, your night sweats, your anxiety, um, your pains, your aches and pains, your fatigue, your chronic fatigue, everything must be in your head until the hormone movement came on and then everything was blamed on menopause, which is a whole nother thing, um, which is all botched up, which is, you know, 
a whole other botched up thing that we can talk about that we have talked about. We could always talk about it again down the road. But, you know, if we don't see it, this is the kind of world it is. If I don't see you catch that fish you said you caught and you don't have a photograph of it to prove it, I don't think it happened. And that's the kind of society we live in. You know, oh, you're storytelling. Oh, maybe you're storytelling on how sick you really are. There's a lot of teens and 20-year-olds and, um, and young adults and, and that are actually suffering. They go to college, they get sick, they can't function anymore, they come back home, they're bedridden, there's nothing wrong with them, doctors can't find anything, and they just lay there sick and they get told they're making it up, that they just don't want to engage in life. And then the Lyme disease saga came into town where since now no one knows what's wrong with anybody, everybody gets a Lyme di- diagnosis. Everybody does. doesn't matter what you do. You just get a Lyme diagnosis now. We're going to do another Lyme show down the road. Um, so, but the point is, it's got to see it to believe it. And if you don't see it, it didn't happen. It's not true. Or it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You can't see heavy metals. You can't see them. I mean, you just can't see them. If you saw the mercury in a can of tuna, then you would you would know. You would see it. It would shine. It'd be like you open your can of tuna and say, whoa, that's a lot of mercury in this tuna today. I guess I'm not eating it. But you can't see it. It's elusive. It's the hidden antagonizer. That's the whole point. And so it's hard to say, ah, maybe I got some heavy metals in the past. Maybe it's creating a symptom. I don't know. Can't see it. Doctor can't see it. Got to take it seriously. Because it's not genes that are taking us down right now. It's the intolerance to toxic heavy metals being one of them. We're getting intolerant to it. Our children are. This is why children are suffering with autism at this point. Autism and, and you know, um, and ADD and ADHD. And more than that, all kinds of different disorders. Hundreds of them, actually. Could name them list after list because of mercury intolerance, toxic heavy metal intolerance. We're at this this point, we're at this crazy point right now in time, in history, where we have to clean up. So what do I like to do? What do I like to use to clean, (laughs) clean the metals up? The heavy metal detox. The heavy metal detox. Some of you guys are probably doing it. So you folks are probably actually doing the heavy metal detox right now, I'm sure. And so what's in the heavy metal detox? What makes it so good? Why does it matter? Because in the heavy metal detox, there are five components, five components that grab metal, hold on to it, and take it to the end. They take it to the end. What that means is it doesn't let the metals go and redisperse back into your bloodstream, redisperse back into your organs, redisperse back into places in your body, back into your brain and so forth. So let's talk about these ingredients. One is spirulina. I don't care what you've read. I don't care what you see, what someone told you. It is by far, way by far better than any Corella. I'm going to talk to you about Corella for a second. Corella is the clumsiest most irresponsible, incompetent substance. Not anybody who recommends it. It has nutritional value. Like Corella has nutritional value. It is good for you in many ways. I don't recommend it because it really stinks at gathering heavy metals. I'll tell you why. Because it drops them. Picks them up, drops them. That's what it does. It doesn't pick them up out of the brain. It can't go that far. So it's not one of those kind of heavy metal removals systems, you know, Corella. It doesn't pick it out of the brain. It doesn't get it out of the liver, really. It's basically its only option is to get it out of the intestinal tract. But when it picks it up out of the intestinal tract, it drops it again before it can even take it out before it can even bring it out of the body. Hawaiian spirulina won't do that. It doesn't have that dropping effect. And if it does have any dropping effect at all, it's going to synergistically work with the barley grass juice extract. So that's why you need the barley grass juice extract. I like Vimergy. That's my favorite one. But the barley grass juice extract combined with the spirulina work off of each other. 
The spirulina likes to get the metals out of the brain. It likes to get the metals out of the central nervous system, the liver. The barley grass juice powder, um, that one likes to get it out of the spleen, intestinal tract, the pancreas, the thyroid, the reproductive system, and they work off of each other. And then cilantro, it's another one to throw into the, to the bag of goods here. Cilantro goes into deep, hard-to-reach places. It goes back for the mercury of the past. The mercury of the past I'm telling you about. That's tormenting our world as we speak now. People giving them symptoms that you can't explain. So cilantro goes deep in the deep down and gets them gets it from places of yesteryear. And then just when cilantro gets a little lazy and it's trying to make it to the finish line, and if it drops that mercury now or drops that toxic heavy metal, that aluminum. The wild blueberries are there. And the wild blueberries are the most powerful, by the way, powerful ways of getting toxic heavy metals out of the body, out of the brain. They go right to the brain. They pull them out of the brain. But what the wild blueberries do is they fill in the spaces where metal was left, where metal left off. I mean, metal oxidizes, leaves little pockets and if you've heard that somewhere else, that came from me. It came from here. It's, it's the only place that ever came from, um, uh, along with a lot of the information we, we share here. I say that in case you get lost. You might go somewhere, well, they're talking about that too, but what's going to happen is there's a trap probably going to be laid out where then it goes off into Corella or it goes off into DMSO or it goes off to something else. So just, you know, this is the way to do it right here. So the wild blueberries goes deep into places pulls out toxic heavy metals in pockets, hard to reach places where it's oxidizing and leaching off, causing memory issues, causing you to forget your car keys. And then it starts to fill in those pockets by repairing tissue, radically repairing tissue with the antioxidants that wild blueberries possess. So that's the power of the wild blueberries. And the wild blueberries pick up where others may drop along the way. The barley grass, the cilantro, the spirulina, they work off of each other. It's a team. And then you got the Atlantic dulse. It's a sea vegetable. Atlantic dulse. It's a sea vegetable. D-U-L-S-E. And you can get Atlantic sea dulse. I like Maine coast sea vegetables for their dulse. That's my favorite. But you might be somebody out there that reads something and you might find that seaweeds or dulse or any kind of seaweed, comes from the ocean. So the oceans are getting polluted. They got mercury in them, and they got radiation in them and everything else. So you might say, well, I'm not going to eat any seaweed. What's he talking about? You're just going to pollute your body. That's not how it works. You can take the dirtiest piece of dolls out of the slimiest ocean we have on the planet, and chances are, if you consumed it, it would draw more out of you than it would leave behind all the way to the end because seaweed doesn't let go it doesn't let go that's how seaweed works it opens a capacity to pull in more absorb like a sponge and take out that's what it does so atlantic sea dulce is not slimy and it's not dirty and it's amazing stuff and incorporate a little bit of that too and what you can do is pull metals out from yesteryear. I like it. Look, I like my heavy metal detox smoothie. I like two bananas, two cups of wild blueberries. I get the frozen wild blueberries, two cups, one cup of cilantro, one cup of orange juice. Okay. I use the fresh stuff. I'll squeeze oranges. I'll just squeeze them with my hand right into the, right into the cup and then scoop out the pits or seeds, uh, you know, or you can, you know, orange juice, you know, um, squeezer whatever an orange juice squeezer juicer or if you don't have any other options get your purest healthiest orange juice even if it's pasteurized get your purest healthy pasteurized orange juice um that has no preservatives whatsoever in it and nothing else in it and you can pour use that if you really had to you can also and the rest of the um ingredients would be like the barley grass juice powder, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of spirulina. You don't have to use a lot if you don't want to. One small handful of Atlantic dulse. 
and you got yourself the heavy metal detox. Now, you know, you can you can make a smaller one if you want. Do what you feel that you want to do. I like doing celery juice too. I like having that on the same morning because it's it with that the heavy the the mineral salts from the celery juice, they provide like a secret weapon of flushing, helping flush the metals out of the liver while you're extracting them. So it's, you know, kind of gives everything kind of a hee-haw, push, uh, heave along the way and gets things out. So I like the the um, celery juice. So I want to talk about what, like, why we need these heavy metals out and why this is so important to do this heavy metal detox. Because neurotransmitters are getting affected in us from these toxic heavy metals. Neurotransmitter chemicals are being destroyed when we have memory problems, when we have brain fog, when we have confusion, when we just have kind of brain fatigue, when we have even other kinds of kind of just not feeling like motivated, mild depression to severe depression, you know, anxiety, different levels of anxiety, and the list goes on. Neurotransmitters get damaged and short-circuited from toxic heavy metals. So you have a neuron in your brain, okay? Electrical nerve impulse is running through that neuron, running across that neuron. It's driving with the use and help of a neurotransmitter chemical that's sitting on that neuron. So the neuro, the electrical nerve impulse is running across that neuron, running across that highway, and it's and it's it's fuel is that neurotransmitter and our neurotransmitters are getting burnt out in this day and age it's not genes that are given up on us you know we don't have these bad genes cuz since nobody knows what's wrong with anybody in chronic illness i'm going to be straightforward and honest i'm not talking about when you break a leg and there's bone fragments and you get an x-ray and the doctor knows where they are i'm not talking about you know um liver transplants and heart transplants I'm not talking about when your gallbladder explodes because it got, you know, obstructed from a big stone. I'm not talking about obvious stuff that we catch on CAT scans and we have, you know, ways of measuring it, ways of weighing it. I'm not talking about neurosurgery, getting an aneurysm out of somebody's brain. These things are incredible, you know, and and, and, uh, and I have tremendous respect and admiration to doctors and surgeons and conventional medicine. And... I'm talking about chronic illness. Literally almost everything else is a mystery. It's a mystery right now. I don't care what anybody says, it's a mystery. And and we need to put the answers out there. I got to be that voice like I was saying for everyone. I have to. And then, hey, you can be the voice too with me. And that's what I'm hoping. The deep down inside, I'm hoping you're the voice with me. Uh, you know, and that because that's the whole point. If we're the voice together, that's even... That's even better. It doesn't get any better than that. And so it's about this kind of information that's so critical. It's about that oxidation that's happening in the brain, the neurotransmitter chemicals in the brain. It's not genes going wrong. That's just another way of of everybody, you know, it, convent, the conventional world and it falling back on the alternative world now because there's so many conventional doctors that went alternative that the kind it all comes over, it's shifting over. That blame on us is being driven over to the once complete and total pure view of the alternative mu- movement. It's been flipped over on us, these ideals. Like, for instance, you know, Autoimmune disease is your body attacking itself wrong. We know that we've explained that a million times, a bunch of times. feels like a million times, but I'll just keep on going a million more. Same thing with the genes, like that it's all blamed on genes now. It's not. So we got these toxic heavy metals burning out neurotransmitters. It's fixable. It's, it's healable. It can get better. We can get our neurons better. We can get rid of the oxidation, the the corrosion of the metals out of the brain. We can get the electrical nerve impulses stronger and better. We can get the lights back on in our bodies. We can get the lights back on in our bodies and we can heal and head in the right direction. And I've said this before, once before, if you had a street and it was blocked with a whole bunch of metal barrels and you ran your car right into it, You'd smash right into it. And that's what heavy metal's like when it's in our brains and it's in our liver and it's in other places. 
when these electrical impulses, these frequencies, they're driving through our body to give us vitality. They run into these metal barrels and they just short circuit. They crash. They sort short circuit. Do you ever know anybody? It could even be you. Do you ever know anybody? It's like, well, I had a short circuit. I couldn't get that thought. I couldn't think about it anymore. Or I got post-traumatic stress syndrome from this whole thing going on. Or I, that's too hard for me even to go there or to think about. You know, I can't, that's just, it's blowing up my head. Do you ever run into anybody like that where something's like blowing up their head and they can't go there because their emotions take over? Because what a lot of what's happening is when you have high heavy metals, you get these short circuits because electrical impulses start flying in different directions because it's hitting different various metals and the information of what someone's telling you or something happening or something emotional is happening, you can't bear it. You can't bear it. You can't handle it because... All kinds of, you know, short circuitings happening. This doesn't mean that you're crazy. No, this means that you're totally sane and then some, and then some. It just means you got some things that are toxic heavy metals that are in there. So when something is too much or when something, when something's too heavy on you, it's hard because the neurotransmitters can't handle the load. The electrical impulses are running into little deposits of metal. And this doesn't mean a lot of metal. You know, when I do scans on people, and, and we're gonna do we're gonna do some more of that too. We're gonna have some fun and take on callers in the future, not in the show, but in the future. And when I do scans on people, I see the heavy metals inside the brain. They reflect like Christmas tree lights. Like if you were outside looking inside a warm house, you know, on a December day or a December evening. And it's dark outside and the lights are on in the house and the Christmas trees through the window, the big picture window, and all the lights are coming through. I can kind of see it like that. These lights light up all through somebody's body and the deposits of metal they have. And when if I go into a place that's busy and there's a lot of people around, and man, I see those lights lighting up everywhere. We got lots of heavy metals in us and it's time to get them out. And so we're going to work together on this. This is, <laughs> this is exciting. You can unfasten your seatbelts now. You can take a deep breath and relax and take your seatbelt off. The heavy metal talk is always, always intense. So look, along with the heavy metal detox, which it seems so simplistic, once again, it's two bananas, two cups of wild blueberries, one cup of cilantro, one cup of orange juice, one teaspoon of barley grass juice powder, one teaspoon of spirulina, one small handful of Atlantic dulse. Okay, just listen. What you can do, and there's op also with this heavy metal detox smoothie, you know, it's optional to add water to blend if you need to. So if you need to add a little water to blend, you can put it in a high speed blender, blend all the ingredients until smooth. If a, th if a thinner consistency is desired, add up to one cup of water if you need to. Maybe a little coconut water if you really want to, if that's something you like. Start with this and take out some foods that don't help when you're getting rid of toxic heavy metals. Take out the eggs, take out any dairy products, milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, take those out if you can, okay? Don't have any pork. If, you're, if you love animal products, lower them to once a day. So if you love animal products and you're eating free range chicken and grass fed beef, lower it to once a day. And if, you, if you're plant-based, vegetarian or vegan or something, or plant-based, um, lower your nuts and seeds down, lower your oils down a little bit. And so that you're, you're, so you're not on a lot of blood fat. So when you start getting these heavy metals out, they leave you. But don't go hungry. Make sure you bring in a lot of fruits and vegetables and other things in there. I stand behind you 100%. I love you guys dearly. You need to know that. Know that in your heart. I care about you. I love you dearly. I believe in you. I stand behind you 100%. I know what it's like not to get answers. Hang in there one day at a time. Love you. Bye-bye.